How unreal is this place? I swear we're participating in an architectural digest shoot that I wasn't made aware of. It's so fabulous. I'm not mad about it. In fact, I'm staying indefinitely, so thank you, Engage, for picking up that tab. <laughs> All right, in all seriousness, I'm Haley Page, wedding dress designer, emoji maker, and if I see you at the bar later, your official cocktail shaker for the weekend. <laughs> when I thought about how I wanted to approach this speech, I really had some fun with it. So step into my imagination for a moment as I envisioned impeccably dressed waiters coming out with fancy trays of tasty snacks and fine shots of tequila, and we all participate in a massive drinking game while petting baby goats, and then I give out free wedding dresses like Oprah. You get a dress, and you get a dress. <laughs> that just translates into let's have some fun today, and I'll try to avoid cheesy quotes about business building. First and foremost, I am a believer in function over formula, so how you function is way more important than the formula you follow or the formula that anyone tells you to follow, so because I'm a wedding dress designer and not a motivational speaker, I'll approach this like I would a new collection with some novelty and a strong emphasis on meaning. So the first thing I get questioned as a designer is where do I get my inspiration? So let's start there. Inspiration for me is always multifaceted. It involves personalities, always a soundtrack, and I love seeing my little sketches as avatars ready to tell different stories. I love just tapping into different energies and really releasing all the feels when I talk about what I get to do for a living. So my official soundtrack for this speech is to Talking Heads once in a lifetime. And I'll start with the famous line, how did I get here? <laughs> it's not singing, that's for sure. <laughs> here are a few things that you might not know about me. I was a competitive gymnast growing up, and I even represented the United States in Finland for the Olympic trials, where I proceeded to fall five times on the balance beam. Uh, that obviously taught me to get back up when I've fallen down, but even more importantly was that I can quickly move on from mistakes, and there's always another event to excel at, hopefully. <laughs> I also have a really loving and supportive family. That's my parents right there on their wedding day. They've been married 40 years, 42 years. Um, and honestly, I felt guilty about it because I've been given a lot of opportunities and access to creativity that a lot of people don't get. I've never taken it for granted, but I love the fact that my grandmother taught me to bake and sew at a young age because that made a world of difference in wanting to pursue a creative lifestyle. And yes, I've always, always wanted to be a wedding dress designer since I could remember, but I actually had confidence issues in wanting to pursue something creative. Every time I said I want to be a wedding dress designer, I felt like I was saying, I want to be Batman. Um, so I actually followed something a bit more formulaic and majored in pre-med at Cornell University. Shocker. Um, <laughs> two of the biggest cliches that contributed to my doubts in becoming a wedding dress designer was one, it's not what you know, but who you know. And two, there are already so many designers out there. How could I possibly fit in? Well, quick first little lesson. The fact that I get to stand up here with you all right now is, is pretty cool. And I guess I should say, don't let cliches kill your dreams. So, booyah kasha. <laughs> okay, next slide. I got married in 2015 and almost got thrown on the PETA list for having a blue unicorn at my wedding. I didn't ask for it, <laughs> but getting to be a bride and designing for myself was so incredible. It was like the tooth fairy losing a tooth. And I felt a much deeper connection having gone through that experience to the bride herself. Um, shout out to Rich Lander, who is my photographer. I love you. <laughs> so good to see you. Um, I'm still so proud of the artistry that went into that day. Switching gears for a moment and getting super real. I got a divorce this year and I learned my biggest lesson yet. You cannot control what other people do. The only thing you can control is how you react to what happens to you. Having gone through that, surprisingly, I've become an even bigger advocate for love and for people making empowering decisions that will ultimately let you lead your best life. Side note, my new boyfriend, he is here with me and he's quite the charmer. He's also resourceful because he snuck into this event without a ticket. <laughs> and if you see him, be sure to ask him about our first trip to Burning Man. <laughs> okay. The first company that I actually launched was back in 2008, and it actually overlapped my stint as a designer for Priscilla of Boston for five years prior to launching Haley Page. 
And it was called Something Borrowed. It revolved around the idea of renting bridal gowns. The experience taught me so much about business building, raising capital. We even pitched to big time personalities like Reem Akra and Mr. Ronnie Rothstein himself, who excitedly explained all the reasons why the business wouldn't work. Go figure. Uh, well, the business is now called Happily Ever Borrowed and successfully run by my good friend, Brittany Haas. Go girl. So when I launched Haley Page in 2011, under the JLM Couture House of Labels, I was 25 years old, and I remember the day I went in for my first interview because it was the first day I realized how important deodorant was for me in New York City in the middle of June. <laughs> CEO Mr. Murphy, C CEO Joe Murphy asked me to complete a sketch project and come back in the next month to review. Well, I showed up the next day with a business plan, market projections, and a penchant for sparkle domination. Now, I know what you may be thinking, okay, Haley, we get it. You really wanted your own bridal line. You worked really hard and you were super eager. But I think the takeaway is that my approach in that moment was the fact that I had already doubted the idea of becoming a wedding dress designer thousands of times before. But for some reason, I didn't give up my pursuit. And something inside me pushed me to show all of my cards. And that is something that I've relied on throughout building my business, not holding back any of my work and aggressively investing all of my creative faculties when I do something. I ended up showing, that sec showing up to my second interview and making it a defining moment for my career. Essentially, I went in, I went all in. And honestly, I figured even if I didn't have the highest hand or I wasn't the designer Mr. Murphy was looking for, I at least kept myself in the game and played into my strengths. Okay. One of the weirdest mottos I keep in the back of my brain is that there will always be a more sprinkled Sunday. And I know it's weird, but it works because the idea of focusing on what you have as opposed to what you don't have reminds us that in the absence of any resources, we can still be resourceful. Don't let your ice cream melt while counting someone else's sprinkles. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> can anyone cra t crave something sweet? Can, can you tell? I like, yes, that's what's happening right now. Okay, well now that you know a little bit more about my background and my weird ass mottos, um, we're gonna shift gears and talk about the business and branding side of things because Haley Page is not just a bridal collection, it's a manifestation of imaginativeness. I worked really hard on that title. It's always a working title. AKA, we offer more than just bridal gowns. So first up, I designed for Haley Page, which is the namesake collection. Blush by Haley Page, which is a lower price point collection. Our new size inclusive collection that is based off of a curated measuring chart for women of all shapes and sizes. One size does not fit all, let's be honest. Um, Haley Page Occasions, which is Bridesmaids and Evening. Our newest uh, La Petite Haley Page for flower girls, pint sized princesses of all kinds. <laughs> and then our athleisure collection, which is really an excuse for sassy sloganeering and looking good while you're getting ready. And then, of course, Haley Page Red Carpet, which is my playground for specialty pieces, showstoppers, and, of course, a shot at the red carpet. <laughs> now, I'm sure you're thinking that's a lot of dresses to design, and you're absolutely right, it is. Um, but I'm just wondering why I don't have my own line of dog tutus yet. <laughs> just kidding. Kind of. <laughs> All right, so who is the Haley Page bride? Well, I don't love categorizing her, but I do see her as a go-getter. She's a strong sense of self, a charming sense of humor. I feel like she's the person that's most likely to start a cake fight at her own wedding and doesn't limit her happy hours to an hour. I get you, girl. We're like this. <laughs> it really is such a privilege to be a part of her day in this special way, but it also feels like one of the most stylish trust falls of all time. So I feel like I should be a confidant for her more than a designer and be really honest with her. So a few simple rules I follow during the shopping process. One, if there's no glow, it's a no-go. There's this glow that happens when she's ready to say yes to the dress. It's something you can't explain, but it bursts out of her like sunbeams. If I don't see that, I kindly walk away from the appointment. <laughs> Two, I also say when in doubt, go all out. I love a bride that's not afraid to take a fashion risk and be of the moment. Who cares what it's gonna look like in 50 years? Just you be you in this moment and enjoy it and run amok. So I love that. 
And lastly, I encourage her to try on something that she never thought she would, something that she's not already married to coming in the door. These days, our brides do a ton of research, and they already have it in their brain what they're going to look like. So until you are that girl standing in a dress in a mirror at a fabulous salon drinking champagne, all bets are off. A lot of dresses don't have hanger appeal, and you'd be shocked at how many girls come in thinking they're Jessica Rabbit and leave as Cinderella. One of the things I'm determined to do as a designer is remain authentic in my execution. For me, I see no other option but to bake from scratch and really keep it real. Can you imagine if Bobby Flay was doing a special on the world's greatest chicken dish and he walks over to the freezer, opens the lean cuisine and pops it in the microwave? I mean, I love lean cuisine, but I don't think so. <laughs> How many of you, show of hands, have experienced a situation where you created something from your soul and you were so proud of it and it just like lit your soul on fire. You were just like, this is my moment and this is from me, it's authentic. Only to find out not too long after that somebody else copied the exact same thing. I know, imitation tactics and knockoffs are becoming rampant in our industry. I've even experienced situations where someone will use the Haley Page hashtag or my initial or original imagery to confuse the customer. And I gotta hand it to them. You've gotta have some serious cojones to not only copycat a product, misrepresent a brand, but also deceive a customer. Although it is frustrating, it's so important to not let it distract you. And the way I deal with these situations is by reinvesting that mojo into hopefully coming up with the next great thing or the next good influence. Going off what I said earlier, we can't control what other people do, so we can control our reactions and work on integrity and being exercises of faithful practices in our business. Okay, so what I'm about to share with you right now is my biggest fear in being a designer, and I even wrote this in my book yesterday during Beth Chapman's segment. Losing my ability to relate to people. The idea of de developing a product or showing a side of my personality that no longer resonates with my demographic that I've worked hard to obtain or any demographic in general is absolutely terrifying. I'm sure I'm not the only designer or creative to ever feel this way, but the best thing about our culture right now is our ability to connect with people. Just by creating new content, personally representing your brand, it's there for the taking. I call this derivative branding. I don't know if that's the right term, but that's what I call it. <laughs> Last year, we signed our first big network deal with TLC to launch a show called Haley Ever After. Um, I had already been on Say Yes to the Dress numerous times before, and it's one of the most enjoyable shows because all I have to do is show up like it's any normal trunk show and just get to be a designer. But in this case, this new TLC project was multi-platform. It involved a docu-series on Facebook Watch, and then it was also a TV special on cable, which revolved around interns competing, and I acted as their mentor. It was the first time that I really felt the lens on me, and what I mean by that is just this demand for someone worth watching. It wasn't just about my, my product anymore, it was also about me. So despite the fact that I felt very vulnerable, I realized the value in sharing my story and positioning myself in a way that I could inspire and educate young creatives. And it was also a nice reminder that I always have something new to learn. Forever am I going to be a student of design. Speaking to zones of discomfort, <laughs> two years ago I jumped into the tech space and launched the very first designer-based wedding emoji app called Holy Matrimoji. Um, the name itself is my most favorite part. <laughs> that and, of course, the Star Wars reference emoji, which you already saw earlier on the slide. <laughs> the app is available for download in the App Store. Uh, oh, wait, this could be my Oprah moment. You get an emoji app, and you get an emoji app. <laughs> I should also mention that the download is free. Um, but anyway, <laughs> why emojis? Um, I'm a comic book nerd, and a good part of my childhood grew up on collecting scratch and sniff stickers, watching Disney movies, and creating my own comic book where it was a superhero bride using her veil as a cape. <laughs> but I'll admit getting to design, or actually choosing to hand draw and design each emoji, each emoji frame by frame was not the best use of my time. Uh, 
It did allow me to give our audience a universal language, and one that humorously taps into that overtaxed state of emotions we all feel with throughout the wedding process. Business expansion has been one of the most rewarding parts of my career because there's such an emphasis on strategy. Just because I want to get involved in other areas of creativity doesn't necessarily mean I should. <clears throat> Dog tutus. <laughs> there is such a beauty to staying in your lane, but landscapes change, dilution happens, and a demand for new products grows. On a creative level, I find it so important to really challenge your artistic palette, be a bit adventurous, see what else is up those go-go gadget sleeves, because growth is not just about profit and sales, it's about infiltration. And what I mean by that is infiltrating and taking a stab at other products, services, or ways to personally represent your brand that might help you bring new things to a customer you already have, or better yet, reach new audiences altogether. The dream is free, ladies and gentlemen, but the hustle, well, that's sold separately. <laughs> This year, we signed our very first licensing deal with Hearts on Fire for engagement rings and wedding bands. I'm so excited, um, but I don't need any more jewelry. Said no woman ever. So <laughs> Haley Page for Hearts on Fire is launching in the spring. And honestly, I'm just excited to have a partnership with a company that values progressive values and um, is empowering. They also believe in conflict conflict-free manufacturing, which is fantastic. This also dovetails nicely with our house of brands because we are a very small team that operates on accountability, a willingness to tackle new things, even if it's not in our job description, <laughs> and just release that fire under pressure. This is obviously not a one-woman show, so it's a great time for a shout out to the people that I get to work with every day, not just my team in New York, but the stores that carry my product to the very vendors in this room that showcase it. It's amazing to be involved in an industry where people believe in what you're doing, how you're doing it, and they bring their specialness to the situation. My CEO, Joe Murphy, has been an incredible mentor and force in my career. He was the person that took a chance on me at 25 years old, and it came at a time where I didn't know if my business was going to work. I also hated the idea of raising capital. I always felt like Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber, like walking into those business meetings with my Samsonite briefcase, ready to just throw IOUs in it. No joke. <laughs> One of the best happenstances about joining JLM at the time that I did was that they had existing infrastructure, manufacturing, and distribution. It was the trifecta for business building, but even more importantly was Joe's willingness to invest in me and my craft. I hope that someday I get to be a Joe Murphy for someone. At the time of meeting him, I was really doubting the whole concept of becoming a wedding dress designer, so it really made all the world of difference to have that validation from somebody. As the label launched and the company grew, I found myself stripping away those doubts and labels I once gave myself. Yes, I showed up to JLM wanting to be a designer, but I jumped at every single opportunity to do something beyond that. I also created opportunities for myself. And I guess as much as I don't take the term lightly, I do consider myself an entrepreneur. I feel sometimes we as creatives tend to prematurely compartmentalize ourselves. And tell me if you agree with this, but we put a label on it and say, okay, I'm good at creating this. This is who I am. I'm gonna put this label on it. Well, the problem is, is that can be used as a crutch. And it also allows you to let the fear of what you don't know or what you don't know how to do stand in the way of you actually obtaining something new for your business. As a gymnast growing up, I didn't automatically know how to backflip. So the idea of practicing a new skill or trying something different really, really works well in business. I think the best thing about saying I'm forever a work in progress is basically a declaration and saying, I don't know what I'm capable of, especially until I try it. So I love leaving that exploratory door open. All right, here we are, almost finished with this speech, and I haven't even once addressed literally my favorite thing about the now. Oh, Instagram, how I love you. Uh, thanks to a friend of mine, I was actually an early adapter to Instagram, so indulge me really quickly in an exchange with her and I back in 2010. Hey, Hales, you gotta get on Instagram. It's major fun and like a digital picture book. Emoji, emoji, emoji. <laughs> Man, I don't want to. I'm so busy right now, and I have to worry about this business, and they've got all this stuff going on, and plus, isn't it a place for just random selfies? 
no, I'm telling you, you'll love it. Throw up your dresses. I'm sure people will love it. You'll at least get two likes, one from me and one from your mom. <laughs> My mom was already on Instagram at that point. I love this story so much because I just don't have time is legitimately the biggest excuse and lie we business people tell ourselves. Actually, that and I don't need to write that down, I'll remember it, but that's for a whole other story. <laughs> Saying you don't have time for something is you declaring that you don't want to make time. I know it's cliche and I said I'd avoid cliches, but that's what's happening right there. You either don't see the investment right up, up front or you're afraid you're going to be bad at it. Everywhere I go, people are glorifying how busy they are and I hate it. I do it every day, but I still hate it. And what else do I hate? Um, talking into the camera and taking selfies. So hold on one minute. Sorry. Hi, I'm Haley Page, and I'm in the middle of my engaged speech. <laughs> We're having a lesson in how awkward this might be. <laughs> okay, wait, let me save it. Hold on, hold on. Yes. <laughs> so no matter how many times I do that, and even though it might not look like it, that is so awkward for me, and I always feel like a narcissist. There's this voice in my head that's like, do people really need to see this? Am I really that interesting? But... Despite these doubts, staying in the social media game has provided enormous advantages for my business. It's an opportunity to show my personality, a sense of humor, be relatable, a unique highlight of my work, what have you. And the accessibility is the most fruitful part. The fact that we now have a voice and a direct line of communication with the very pulse of the demographic we're trying to have an impact on, is you can't put a price tag on that. Except you can and it's free, so get out there and do it. Um, <laughs> So it also removes an intimidation barrier between designer to bride. It's now friend to friend. Had my friend not told me about Instagram, I sure, I'm sure I would have joined at one point or another. But I think the takeaway is that the quicker your willingness to hop outside your comfort zone, the faster you are to catch an edge. And remember, most discomforts are temporary anyway. Here I go again with my weird ass mottos, but one of the first lessons I learned on social media is that there's always somebody at the pizza party that hates freaking pizza. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You could be serving up the most from true lesson slice of pie and there's still gonna be somebody there that's either lactose intolerant or prefers a salad. I try to bring that little lesson into my design practice as well because at the end of the day, you can't be everything to everyone. So I don't concern myself with who I might offend and focus instead on who I could inspire. That one bride out there that loves the fact that I embroidered a baby unicorn into the dress, that one bride that wants me to crash her wedding, those are the ones I'm concerned about. Not the random comment that says, you like unicorns, what are you two? Or the other one that said, you're sending a crop top ball gown down the runway, what planet are you living on? True stories. There is such a strong emotional investment from our bride, which is why I believe in creating something that transcends the material girl. Bringing it back to our soundtrack, something that just says, once in a lifetime. More now than ever, this industry demands you. Your inventiveness, your imaginativeness, your personality, your sense of humor, your content. It's such an honor to be among all of you and a part of a business that sees the value of love and artfully weaves it into this industry. Love is grand. So show of hands, little exercise. How many of us have been in love? How many of us more than once? And if you didn't raise your hand, oh my stars, do you have something to look forward to? Um, how crazy is it that we have this capacity inside us? This something we can't explain that just says, I need to love this person. I, I have compassion for them. I, I share this like part of my soul with them, and, and it's something I just can't explain. I'm really not afraid to get emotional when I talk about love, because it is such a privilege to get out there and pick your person and be like, you, right there, you're my person. Let's get weird. <laughs> Let's find some fabulous garb and throw a freaking party. And us as an industry, we get an invite to that party. Or if you're like me, you don't get an invite, you just show up anyway. <laughs> So, oh, love, I know I didn't want to end on something cliche, but it's too special not to address it. The fact that I get to hustle for love and that I get to do it for a living is crazy. 
Not a day goes by where I take what I do for granted. That I don't stop and take serious inventory on the fact that I get to be an instrument for something not only greater than myself, but greater than my craft. As an industry, we owe it to ourselves and to those we are here to serve to get swept away in love. In fact, our own ability to give and receive love is what allows us to best serve our demographic. The best thing you can do for your business is give yourself an allowance for love. To empathize with our customer and get on their frequency to which they are vibing is the greatest advantage and greatest edge we have as artists and entrepreneurs in this industry. But wait, there's, there's more. <laughs> so apparently shipping into Mexico is a little bit harder than I thought it was. So I wanted you all to go home with a little postcard of one of my sketches, but because I didn't get that, oh, thanks, thank you. Because I didn't get a chance to do that, um, I've decided to have a little giveaway. Uh, this one person in the room is going to get a no questions asked, but some questions asked favor from me. And I'm going to call it a pay it forward, or actually a page it forward. Let's, let's brand that. Page it forward. Yes. Um, so what that means is you just get a favor from me, an industry favor, whatever it may be. Perhaps it's a dress at cost, or it's a shout out on Instagram, or it's just a cocktail at the bar later. But I hope that inspires everybody to page it forward this weekend at the Engage Summit. So one of you has a sketch underneath your chair. It's like taped awkwardly underneath. Um, and I think I put it somewhere over there. Oh my gosh, it'd be so funny if someone's not sitting. Yes, okay. You get a favor. <laughs> Just you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for your attention. It really is such a privilege to be among you. And I look forward to engaging with all of you at the summit.